time for the mid-season um, garden video. So I always I walk in the garden gate here. Come in, come in. <laughs> Here's the uh, the pots that I started plants out in. I usually I start all my squashes and cucumbers off in these pots. I move them into the garden, and I and I let some grow in the pots just to make maximum use of the space. So. For instance, right here, these are cucumbers that are growing, and this is a uh, squash plant, more squash plants. This one's starting to vine out, so those are trombocinos. I did manage to get the seeds going. Looks like my battery is going down here. I better make this quick. So, lots of squash plants. I just today cleared that one out there with some radishes in there. I got a few, handful of them. More uh, cucumbers. And the bean wall, the pole bean wall, a little late getting it started because I didn't have enough seeds. But it is getting going, as you can see. Eventually it'll be all up this uh, thing by, I'd say, end of month or into next month. Uh, probably by September with lots of pole beans coming in. The bush beans, I'll show you, they're about to be giving me beans shortly. And by the time they peter out, I figure that those pole beans will be kicking in. So I'll have a continuous supply of beans. This is uh, tons of cucumbers. This is a cucumber patch. So I'm gonna, I should get a lot of them this year. Last year, almost zip, and squash-wise, also almost zip. This year, we will looks like we will get squash. I don't know what happened last year. Like I say, gardening's an adventure. This is from the mistake of last year, where I got um, cabbage in place of uh, Brussels sprouts when I went to replace them. So I have cabbage plants, blow, uh, plants growing here for six of them, and I have six of these... Uh, broccoli plants. In fact, there's a head. Well, it's not very big. Starting there now. Um, so we'll see if I do as well as last year where I got a good amount of broccoli. Again, there's a kind of mixed in here a lot of tomato plants. And uh, this is a, a fairly large size squash really going. I'm not sure what time. I think this is a, a zucchini. More cabbage. Lots of Brussels sprouts. Yes, we made it this year without damage from the critter. So there's a half dozen of those. Uh, there is a critter around that could have tried to get in and didn't. I'm thank thankful for that. If he gets in now, the plants are fairly well established, so it would be a better. Corn. I don't know if I'll eventually get some or not, but I'm able to buy it. Another, uh, another uh, uh, cucumber. That's another uh, tomato plant. Here's a ton of uh, bush beans that are growing. Down at the end there, I'll walk down there, we'll show you that, but on the way down you can see another whole row of tomato plants. Mostly a lot of tomato plants. In fact, uh, if you just look over there, there's more tomato plants in the next two rows. Then down at the very end down there, which we'll get to, there's some peppers that are growing up. And, uh, okay, going down this row, the row of beans, the row of, uh, and they're all flowering. You can probably see that they're flowering. I don't know if you can or not. Let's see. See? They're flowering. There'll be beans galore very soon. Same with these. They're flowering. There'll be peas. In fact, there's some small ones here and there. Here's one right here. I can get it. I don't know if that shows. There's a couple there. Um, these plants here, uh, there's four sunflowers. So I don't know, we got one that was huge last year, so these are the same seeds. So I may have four huge ones, very tall ones, we'll see. So, these are uh, squash plants, three of them at the end of this row of tomatoes. And this is the, uh... Got lots of tomatoes here and there and everywhere. I don't know how well they'll ultimately do, but I'm sure we'll get some. And pepper plants. And uh, they say the tail end here is these tomato, more tomatoes. Uh, also, if I go in here, this is these are huge Jerusalem artichokes. They've grown. They're taller than I am right now. Especially those there, though that's probably a foot or or a foot and a half taller than I am. <laughs> so they're probably six feet tall. 
or seven feet tall I'm not really sure but they're up there so you got to believe that those Jerusalem artichokes down below are growing pretty good by fall there'll be many more there was a pretty good amount last year and they, you just dig them up and they go and go and go and they duplicate so Judy says she wants to dig them up and actually eat them this year I dug them up and they didn't get prepared last year this is oh boy that was not a good step this is something I planted last year from a $2 plantlet that I got at the Manchester Animal Shelter. It's cat mint. It's, it's really go, going like crazy. Maybe even in a way taken over, but that's all right on the edge here. I don't mind. Um, I wish this was cat nip. I would harvest it. But Judy says, we don't use what we got. And I said, it doesn't matter. I'll bring it into the Animal Rescue League and share it with the kitties there. No problem at all. Homegrown catnip. Well... My catnip plant that I got didn't make it, so here's the scraggly couple that I planted this year. I don't know if they'll get going, but I sure wish it would get going the way that cat mint is. They look very similar. They look very similar in the leaves and the flowers, but the cat mint doesn't seem to have that addicting drug-like cat. Uh, the, the cats eat it, but they don't go uh, nuts while eating it and after eating it. You know what I mean, flipping around, acting drunk. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that covers it. Oh, except for one thing. The bee, the, the wall of glory, which is all the way down to the end there. It's uh, well underway. Um, uh, it's not to the point where it was last year, but it will be. Yeah, it'll be completely cover this fence. You won't see any of this when I go to the end of season video, if, if I, unless I miss my guess. You won't see any of this. It will be completely covered and with a wall of morning glories. Now, interestingly enough, we seem to have a predator. This really shows here. See how these just kind of end? See, this is, you can see how they're supposed to end. They're supposed to kind of have this, you know, grow out, and at the end, they'll be like a, a flower. So you can tell the ones that haven't been nibbled on but here's the ones that have. And what would be this tall that could nibble on things at this height? Height, I think you could guess. It's deer. Oh dear. Yes, we have deer. Oh dear, oh dear. So they're out here nibbling away on my morning glory wall. But you know what? There's plenty to go around, so I'm not too worried about it. It'll still grow and cover this whole thing. And then I think that does do it. What happens is this morning glory propagates itself. It's right on the ground here. It just the seeds land and then they germinate right up from here no problem at all and although I have a box here that some of it's growing in and I, and I have a uh, what do you want to call it a planter down there that is growing out of if I didn't have that there it would still be growing out of the ground they're very hardy once you get them established and going morning glory is really something else I dare say they probably like the uh, Jerusalem artichokes and the ease that I seem to have in growing them and them coming back each year all by themselves. Gotta love it. And uh, I think that's mostly it. I mean, I could go over and show you my uh, grapevine, which is Concord Grapes, which every year comes back and has lots of grapes on it this year that are going to come in. And I pick them and mash them and make grape juice out of them. <laughs> okay, gotta go.